Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this of course is the Blue Collar Wine Program where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And we're continuing with the theme of Washington Wine Month. Before I say that, you know, Seahawks, they play the Chicago Bears preseason. I know preseason doesn't always mean a lot, but you know, it's kind of cool to watch them, see how they're progressing. Season's getting close, getting excited for the football season. Love watching Seahawks. And the Colts, of course. Like the Colts too, but my heart belongs to my home team. One thing about Washington wines that's really cool is in Washington State, because of the climate in eastern Washington in particular, they can really grow a lot of different varieties. They don't, they're not just stuck to certain varieties and because in the, the United States it's not like uh, let's say Bordeaux and France or Burgundy where they're restricted in what they can grow. They can grow anything they want and they really have a fun time with that. So there's a lot of different varietals in Washington State that actually do pretty good. And I have three examples, well, except for Merlot because I believe, as I've said many, 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 many times, Washington State produces some of the best Merlot in, I believe, in the world. Really. And so we have a Cab Franc, which I find does very well in Washington State, and we have a Malbec. So let's get started. We're going to start off with the um, Willow Crest Estate Grown 2011, again a tough vintage, Cabernet Franc, Yakima Valley, Washington State, Rosen at $15. I did a uh, episode, an interview with uh, Julie Brown from Willow Crest, and that was a fun interview to do. And we didn't taste the Cab Franc on that episode. We just stuck with white. So what's our focus? This is our only red, by the way, which is interesting. Now Cabernet Franc can take on many different faces, especially with wood. I find that Cabernet Franc with oak really gets a real toasty kind of mocha chocolate flavors to it. Some people like that, some people don't. Uh, I'm kind of on, uh, in both quarts. I like them either way. But let's see what we get with this Willow Crest Cabernet Franc. One of the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon. As you know, ever seen Sauvignon, Cabernet Sauvignon is a blend of, is a cross of Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc. Getting an interesting like plum, red plums. Very perfumed on the nose, which I like. Getting some red, a lot of red fruit, red berries coming through. Some violets. A little tobacco. Yeah, red plums. Red currants, tobacco, violets all day. Very perfumed, as I said. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice structure. Um, good acidity. Kind of mouth-watering. But it has that red fruit coming through on the palate. Big time, I get a little bit of licorice underneath that red fruit, the tobacco's there, violets, it feels like I'm, I just chewed on violet petals, a little bit of rose petal too, it was one of those wines where you really, you really food friendly, it'd be good with spaghetti, red pasta sauce, great with steaks, ribs, it's a really good wine, but it's light enough. Now, this is the interesting thing about Cabernet Franc. Franc. It has a, enough, a light enough, maybe even to go with it. I would, I would tempt to have it with a Cornish game head or a chicken breast. This is well made. I like this Cabernet Franc. Then, like I said, nice thing about Cab Franc. Very food friendly. Um, good acid. I, just to touch thin, just a hair thin on the finish, but you don't expect Cab Franc to really hang on that way. I'm going to go B plus on that wine. I really like it. Good job. 15 bucks. There's so many Cab Francs out there from Washington. They run. 
I just put one on the shelf down at the store, it's $30, $33. So $15 is a great value, definitely a B plus wine. Let's move on to the next one. Now, once again, we're going to Canoe Bridge, a winery that's been along Washington State for a long time. We tasted their Cabernet Sauvignon, really liked it in the last episode. Now, we're going to taste the Expedition Merlot 2012. Again, excellent vintage, Poor Seven Hills, huge Appalachian in the Columbia Valley. Appalachian, there you go, Expedition Merlot from Canoe Ridge. And this one rolls in at $16. Let's see what we get on the nose. Yeah, I think Merlot from Washington. And, you know, we all know about the movie Sideways, how it kind of hit Merlot really hard. And we know they probably shouldn't do Merlot on the central coast of California. Uh, but, you know, as, as you know, right bank of Mer uh, Bordeaux, big time Merlot. Petrus is Merlot. Um, Chevelle Blanc has a lot of Merlot in it. So, Merlot is a very well respected grape amongst grape growers. Oh, almost candy esque on the nose. Like I'm getting like candied licorice, candied currants. A little touch of vanilla, and I can, I can just get a skosh of oak coming through. But the licorice is definitely there. A little tobacco. Very nice. I mean, this is one of those noses or bouquets that you just really enjoy smelling. Get some blackberry coming through, blackberries and currants. Like a sweetness, like I said, like a candy-esque almost. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice round, excuse me, the cat makes an appearance. Nice round fruit, I mean, for those of you that want good fruit to your wine without going like into the fruit bomb category, this is a nice wine. I, the, the currants and cherries and blackberries come through in spades. little grip on the back side I'm telling you this is a serious wine yeah I got fruit up front but I'm gonna show you that I, I'm gonna kick some butt on the finish a little grippy I like that Get a little like soft leather action going on but the fruit notes just kind of linger they're just like hanging in there they're really nice um, I'd say silky structured tannins To be honest, a little too fruit forward up front for me, but the end of it kind of makes up for that. But that fruit just hangs at currants and cherries and blackberries are just there. I can feel it so on my palate. There's a lot of you that are going to love this wine. It's a good Merlot, $16. It's a good value play. I'm going to go B, B plus on this one also. Another great one from Canoe Ridge. Let's move on to the next one. Another one from my buddies. The Milbrandt boys, Butch and Jerry, and the winemaker, Joshua Maloney. This is the 2012 Milbrandt Vineyards, the Estates, Malbec, Waluk Slope, Washington. Take a look at the label. These guys do some killer wines. Now, this is not available retail. It's only available through the winery. Rolls in at $26. And for you, those of you who keep saying, why would I spend $26 on a Malbec when I can buy a really good Malbec from Argentina for $12 or $10? Well, land is more expensive here. We're not subsidized by the government. Labor's more expensive. There's a lot of reasons why Malbec is more expensive in the state of Washington and other places. So you just have to decide, is this Malbec worth spending another $10 or $12 on to try, experience a Washington Malbec. I thought it was cool, Luke Bradshaw from Core Cellars said he thought Malbec was the bridesmaid of wines in Washington. They make some great Malbec. They are more expensive 
You just have to decide if you want to go there or not. Amazing color on this. I, I, I can't really give it any justice, but this stuff is like deep, deep, dark purple, reddish color. I'd say purple, black more. Let's see what we get on the nose. A lot of vanilla, chocolate, mocha coming through. On top of bed of currants. I'm getting a lot of boysenberry on this too, which I like. And a little like warm leather notes. Let's see what we get on the palette. Wow. Very, very deep, deep, deep wine. This is like one of those people you meet, and at first you're thinking, God, who is this guy? And then after you talk to him for a little bit, or him or her, you realize, man, this person is intelligent. This person has a lot of stuff going on. At first glance, when I first put this in my mouth, I thought, wow, am I going to have to like one of Milbrand's wines? Which I would, by the way. I would definitely do it. Hey, I'm about the consumer. I'm about you guys. I don't want you wasting your money on a bottle of wine for 26 bucks. But this has some depth to it. This has a lot of layers. Kind of a, a tar, currant, black plum, boysenberries with a little spice action. You get a little bit of a hint of that, that mocha vanilla, no doubt from the oak. And then some nice bright acidity on the finish kind of drives everything to the end with some seriously, seriously, some tannic structure on the backside. You get a lot of like red flower notes, tobacco, a little licorice coming through. Solid wine. This 2012, I'd, 10 years easy. It will develop. I'm going to put a couple, um, hopefully I can get some from the Millbound boys, but I'm going to put a couple away because I think this is going to really, really flesh out and become an even stronger, bigger, smoother style wine. Hard to find. They're saying hard to find one from Argentina like this. I love Argentina Malbec, especially the really well-made ones. And I really like this one from Milbrandt. I'm going A- minus on this one. I like it a lot. I think it has great potential. Might even be an AA plus wine in a few years. Nice job, guys. Nice job, Josh. You know, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great, great weekend. And, uh, you know, I really do appreciate it. Uh, the subscribers that I have. If you would like to subscribe, please subscribe below. And, you know, if you have a chance, check out my blog, StanleyWineMan.com, or I'm the Blue Collar Wine Guy on the Seattle PI. Cheers, and here's to keeping the stomp out of wine.